Since I was 17, I have been fascinated with elephants and non-human animal sentience. I began my studies at Wesleyan, majoring in pre-vet and neuroscience with the intent of becoming a large animal veterinarian who could work with conservation efforts to save the dwindling elephant populations in Africa and Southeast Asia. After reading Elephants on the Edge, I contacted the author, Dr. Bradshaw, about the possibility of an internship at the Karulos Center. In discussions with Gay, I have learned about the pressing need for veterinary medicine and conservation, not only to understand the physical nature of elephants, but also their psyches. As with humans, the mind cannot be separated from the body. Further, the highly complex elephant societies have been torn apart by human violence and habitat destruction. There is epidemic psychological trauma in Asian and African elephants. To restore elephant culture, it is necessary to support res restoration of their communities and their minds. I began my internship with Carulos in June. The Carulos internship entails two components. First, there are 16 hours of lectures, readings, and discussions on transspecies psychology and traumatology. The second half of the internship is learning and service practicum. This takes the coursework, learning, and applies it directly to on-the-ground needs that support wildlife. My internship practicum was designed to provide me an experience at an elephant sanctuary and observe wildlife, vet veterinary medicine, and conservation in the field. My volunteer practicum began at one of Karulos international partners, the Boonlot Elephant Sanctuary, located in Sukhothai, North Thailand. It is about 250 miles from Bangkok. There, I was able to observe and reflect on elephant psychology and watch how principles of trauma recovery that I learned during the course are applied to specific individuals. Boonlot's Elephant Sanctuary is a rescue and care facility for Asian elephants who are victims of human abuse and torture. Typically, sanctuary elephants are former laborers who, who used to work in the forest, perform for tourists, or beg on the streets. Sanctuary goals are twofold, to help individual elephants rehabilitate emotionally, socially, and physically, and advocate for the cessation of practices that abuse and harm elephants. Currently, BLESS is home to 12 elephants. Each receives individual care that is tailored to their needs and aspirations. BLESS exemplifies Karulos' 10 principles of being sanctuary. The 10 principles draw from the fields of trauma recovery and depth psychology. I arrived at the airport in Thailand and was graciously picked up by Anand, the co-founder of BLESS and the husband of sanctuary co-founder Catherine Connor. Anand drove me to the village of Ban Tuk, where Boon Lot's Elephant Sanctuary is located. This photo shows one of the first walks I took with the elephants at Bless. Every day, the elephants set out with their mahouts to roam around the 523 acres of forested land owned by the sanctuary to socialize, relax, and be like elephants again. I walked with them pretty much every day to observe them and interact with them when they felt like approaching me. The three elephants in this picture, from left to right, are Lotus, Peng Dao, and Wasana. They are best friends and nicknamed the Gossip Girls because of their constant chatter and sassy attitudes. The fact that they can be themselves, show their real personalities, is testimony to trauma recovery at Bless. Before coming to Sanctuary, the elephants were all held captive at elephant camps. Being around 40 years old, they would have been captured from the forests of North Thailand as babies or very young elephants. Capture is usually done through pit traps which cause physical injury and traumatically separate elephants from their family. After they were captured, they would have gone through a process called Fajan, which translates to separation in Thai. The details of this process vary, but it is incredibly violent and traumatic. 
They suffer relational trauma due to separation from their family, which is replaced by an abusive human as well as shock trauma from the initial capture. Once they have undergone Fajan and are deemed docile by their Mahout, they are rented out to tourist camps. Lotus, Pangdao, and Wasana were made to perform undignified circus tricks as well as give rides to tourists. In these camps, they spent their lives tethered on short chains and isolated from other elephants. Physically and emotionally bound most of the day and all of the night, such elephants express severe suffering, swaying back and forth or bobbing up and down incessantly. This pain motion of dissociation is referred to as, stereoty as stereotypy. Often stereotypy is defined as pointless or purposeless movement, but it plays a very specific purpose, one of the few ways in which an imprisoned individual can try and cope with the profound anguish she or he experiences. Today, Lotus, Pangdao, and Wasana have begun to find recovery through their relationship with each other, and with the tender and respectful care of Bless. Lotus is one of my favorite elephants I met. She has a lot of quirks, like her habit of piling branches and leaves on her back. She's also very careful of her sensitive feet, and refuses to step in puddles when they are in her way, and will very gracefully find another route to avoid them. Lotus suffers from foot rot as a result of her life of pain and abuse before coming to Sanctuary, but she still loves to walk and explore every day. On my third day, Wasana almost ventured off the property to a nearby farmer's cornfield, but was quickly coaxed back out of the field by her mahout. She stopped by where I was sitting to say hello on her way back to a patch of tasty elephant grass. It was interesting to watch the way Filoy, Wasana's mahout, directed Wasana away from the farmer's land without using force or even raising his voice. Instead of shouting at her to stop, he gently and politely asked, Wasana, what are you doing? Wasana, where are you going? And she turned back and came back to the group. All caretakers at Bless are mahouts, trained elephant handlers, but they are very different from the typical mahouts you would see working in camps. Most mahouts are taught the trade from a very young age by a parent and are taught that elephants must be controlled with force. They always carry a bull hook with them to protect themselves. But Catherine and Anna knew there was another way to work with elephants. They retrain people to instead develop a relationship with the elephants they worked with that was respectful and non-dominating so that the elephant trusted them. Anon and Catherine worked very closely with the staff to incorporate gentle and respectful, critically non-dominating ways of being with elephants. Non-domination is essential for trauma recovery because it allows the elephant to begin to feel safe again and regain confidence and agency. Anon was a mahout when he met Catherine at the elephant hospital in Lampang. Anon grew up in the village where Bless is located, and there had been a large forest fire that had severely burned one of the village elephants, Somai. Catherine watched Anon whispering to Somai and treating him with respect and compassion, and I knew that Anon was, Anon was different from many other men who worked with elephants. Somai ended up surviving through his injuries and now resides at Bless. He has become a foster parent to the two youngest elephants, Lam and Michak. The setting at Bless is wonderful. This is the Bless Breakfast Hut. It is a beautiful space to eat meals while watching all of the animals. It overlooks one of the pools as well as a couple of snack locations the elephants love to frequent. Marmite is the dog in the front of this picture, looking cheeky as always. He lives at the sanctuary with his brother Peanut Butter and his sister Honey. The three of them were born at the sanctuary and are the friendliest and happiest dogs I've ever come across. Unlike many of the other residents at Bless, who came from terribly abusive backgrounds, these dogs have only known kindness and freedom, what psychologists call a secure attachment, their entire lives. And the difference really shows in their personalities. Wasana wanted a taste of our lunch before we had a chance to eat it. Sitting on one of the cushions behind is Romeo, one of the 30 cats that make their home at Bless. He's curled up on his chair. Romeo is a favorite among guests because he loves to cuddle up with anyone that will let him on their lap. This is Malie. She is a huge part of the Blessed family. Malie handles visitor relations and is often the go-between for guests and mahouts as she speaks very good English. She's also hilarious and all of the guests love being around her. Here she gives Wasana a friendly greeting as we get ready to go out for a walk. The elephants love to stop by the hose on our way to get on our way out to get a drink and splash around with their mahout. Filoy is giving Wasana a drink. His ability to sense every tiny communication with the elephants 
that the elephants make is astounding. They have a very close and trusting relationship. I learned so much from watching Philoi interact with the elephants. Guests typically stay on the sanctuary grounds, but I stayed the three weeks in a wonderful guest house in the village. Catherine kindly lent me her motorbike to travel to and from my guest house in the village. I had about a 20 minute commute every morning on the beautiful road flanked by rice fields and mountains. It was great fun learning how to ride a motorbike and having some time every day to appreciate the beauty of the Bantuk region. The temperature in northern Thailand is around 90 degrees Fahrenheit in the summer and very humid. The skies are beautiful gray-blue, and the mountains are green with thick vegetation. The air is filled with the scent of flowers and trees. There's a rainstorm almost every afternoon that feels like the clouds open up and dump out all of their contents, but it is usually followed by a beautiful rainbow. Back at the sanctuary, here is Malie again. In addition to helping the guests find their way around Bless and learning and leading walks, Malie is also an amazing caregiver to the dogs and cats. She has three dogs herself at home and knows a lot about their care. One day, poor Honey got her eye irritated digging around in the forest on the morning walk. Malia and I treated it with some medicine to ease the irritation. Honey was very grateful, a perfect patient as always. You can see her brother Marmite monitoring in the background to make sure we are doing a satisfactory job. Because of the hard life they have endured prior to coming to Bless, most of the elephants require daily medical treatments for chronic injuries. Here, Wasana is getting her foot cleaned out. She suffered a landmine injury many years ago that left a hole in her foot and has caused her foot to be permanently deformed. The hole is easily infected, especially by tramping through the mud all day, as Wasana loves to do, so it is necessary to clean and soak the wound in minerals and antiseptic every day to prevent infection. Wasana is a very good patient, and Lotus and Pangdao always stay close for moral support. Anon and Catherine always insist that the groups of elephant friends should stay together. This is natural and wild free-living elephant society. Wasana is an extremely good patient, but Pangdao, on the other hand, can be very sensitive when it's time for checkups, and Wasana is always there on hand to help her stay calm. The Elephant Hospital in Lempang is a fully equipped veterinary hospital designed specifically for elephants run by the Thai government in northern Thailand. It is the only one of its kind in the country and where any elephant must be taken for large veterinary treatments. But unlike Bless, the elephant hospital in Lang Pang, it is unheard of for elephants to be allowed to comfort each other during treatments. They are always kept restrained and separated. As a pre-veterinary medicine medical student, I have had some experience working in small animal clinics in the U.S. However, I have never worked with elephants before. Being on hand at Bless, where I could closely observe elephant care, was an incredible opportunity for me. I was able to witness various types of treatments given to the different elephant residents, and I helped out whenever I could. Here I am cleaning out the bath before Wasana's foot bath, with Peng Dao behind me expecting, inspecting my work. Early one morning, in the middle of my stay at Bless, a woman from the village showed up at Catherine's door with her dog Omo, who had been run over by a motorbike. This is a frequent occurrence all throughout Thailand, because dogs are pretty much because dogs pretty much always roam free and often will hang out right by the sides of roads. Oma was unresponsive, but she was breathing and had a weak pulse, so we loaded her into a truck and immediately left for the nearest veterinary hospital, which is unfortunately over three hours away. When we arrived, they gave Oma x-rays and found out she had a skull fracture, but believed they could fix it. She went into surgery that day, and they were able to repair her skull, but weren't sure if she would be strong enough to recover from surgery. We had to leave her there for the next three days, receiving IV fluids, but miraculously, she pulled through. When she came back, we syringe-fed her and helped her heal as much as we could, and slowly she began to get better. By the time I left, she was walking around Catherine's house on her own and starting to eat without our help. Here is a picture of Omo today, courtesy of the Bless Cat and Dog Home website. She is almost fully recovered and has joined the pack at Bless. She never went back to her owners, who thought Bless would give her a safer home than they could. One important thing to remember is that although they are in sanctuary and know they are cared for and protected, the elephants are still vulnerable to the past. For example, most trucks make Peng, make Peng Dao quite stressed, but whenever she vocalizes fright at the sound of an engine starting, Lotus and Wasana rush to her side and soothe her. Not all trucks to the are the same to her, obviously. Here is a shot of Lotus and Peng Dao talking by the food truck. 
The food truck, which always arrives with fresh snacks and is driven by the Mahouts, doesn't seem to bother Peng Dao too much. I wonder what the difference is between this truck and others that frighten her. The day this photo was taken, the food truck came early. One of the older male sanctuary elephants, Tang Jai, pictured above, ventured off site onto a, neighbor's a neighboring farmer's fields. He ended up trampling through some of the crops. To keep good relationships and be responsible neighbors, Bless compensated by paying for the damages of the entire area. After Tang Jai was guided home, Bless staff and guests picked all of the corn in the area and brought it back for the elephants. Even though Bless encompasses over 523 acres of land, there is still a risk of elephants treading on neighboring lands. Elephants naturally walk many miles a day, so even this large area isn't big enough for them. This is why Bless is planning to purchase enough land to have a cushion between their land and that of the farmer's land, to prevent elephant damage, elephants damaging crops. Bless is trying hard to change the image of elephants and cultivate a positive attitude towards these magnificent beings who are treated so cruelly and have very little space to live. During the last week of my stay at Bless, a local official came to look through the resident elephants' registrations. This is a very important process, as it prevents baby elephants from being poached from the wild and sold into the tourist industry. The registration process is still very flawed, but has improved greatly over the past few years. And the Thai government has made a pledge to improve it further over the next two years. The officials measure the tusk length and marks, and mark down the physical condition of the elephants, as well as checking to see that they match their paperwork. One of the most important projects that BLESS does is educate tourists on what happens in the elephant tourism industry. Through various online campaigns and with the help of other nonprofits, BLESS strives to end the practices that cause the damage to the elephants that they have rescued. Thailand is one of the top tourism destinations in the world, and animal tourism has become a large part of the tourist experience. There are many zoos and circuses that use elephants, tigers, and orangutans, and other species. There are currently about 4,000 elephants captive in elephant camps used for tourism. These camps vary in size and organization, from small roadside operations um, with one elephant, which are common in Phuket, to massive operations with up to 100 elephants, which are common in Chiang Mai. They offer elephant riding and elephant shows, where the elephants are made to perform demeaning tasks like bike riding, dancing, and playing soccer. When they are not performing or giving rides, the elephants are chained on two-foot chains on concrete, unable to touch any of their fellow inmates. Catherine stressed the importance that I see for myself what these camps are like, so I would understand the gravity of what they were trying to do. On the last couple of days I was in Thailand, one of Catherine's colleagues, Sarah Blaine, took me there. Sarah Blaine runs the nonprofit The Mahouts Foundation and is one of Catherine's biggest supporters and closest friends. She and her family visit Bless at least once a year. They have also spent a lot of time compiling research at various tourist camps to illustrate the abuse that goes on there. In doing that work, they came to know very well many of the camp Mahouts and realized that the elephants are not the only victims of the tourist industry. Most Mahouts do not actually want to be doing the work that they're doing, but they do not think they have a way out because of their dire financial condi conditions. The camp pays them next to nothing, so they rely entirely on tourist tips, which pushes them to work their elephants longer and harder. When I joined Sarah on one of her research trips, I witnessed the profound horror of the elephant camps. I had left a sanctuary filled with peace and tranquility, with elephants roaming freely and socializing, to a camp filled with elephants swaying back and forth, tethered, covered in scars. The most disturbing sight I saw were two young elephants, chained just feet from each other, but unable to touch due to the length of their chains. They were reaching towards each other, trying desperately to touch. Every once in a while, they would graze each other's shoes and stop. The cruelty of keeping them so close to each other, yet unable to touch, was heartbreaking. On my last day at Bless, I saw this beautiful moment. I witnessed the profound joy expressed by Boon Tong when her beloved Mahout, Pichad, retur returned from a short detour. He had had to leave for a couple of hours to speak with a farmer. Boon Tong and Pichad are very close. She's not as social with the other elephants, but chooses instead to spend most of her time with Pichad. This is another vital point of, regarding trauma recovery and illustrates two of the ten principles of being sanctuary, being heard and belonging. Being heard entails careful listening. Listening is the opposite of exerting control. It entails paying attention to individual preferences, moods, and feelings. Belonging is the opportunity to choose and cultivate positive relationships with whomever one wishes.
Also on my last day at Bless, I got a second treat, to see one of the most joyous sights in the world, an elephant happily rolling around in the mud. Wasna loves mud more than anything else, and whenever she can, she rolls around and rubs her body against the muddy riverbanks. As well as providing a home for elephants, cats, and dogs, Bless also takes in other homeless animals when they are brought to them. They have two cows, three tortoises, and two wild boars currently. They had their first wild boar pepper already when I had arrived, but they were notified about a family in the village that found a baby boar being attacked by dogs in the woods. The family had rescued him and taken him into their home and named him Mr. Pip. They realized quickly, though, that they wouldn't be able to care for him as he got larger, so they asked Bless to take him. Here is Sarah Blaine again, with her daughter Natasha, who are spending some time with Mr. Pip. He had been rescued just a few days before this photo was taken. Mr. Pip was used to living in a home with people and enjoyed belly scratches, but Sanctuary staff has slowly encouraged him to be more comfortable on his own, since he won't, it won't be safe for him to play with people as he grows larger. Fortunately, once he's large enough, they can introduce him to the female boar Pepper, so he can have a companion. Right after we brought Mr. Pip to Bless, he would not let go of the pillow that came with him from his house. Mr. Pip now lives in an outdoor enclosure, but remains very attached to his pillow. In keeping with being sanctuary principles, the Bless staff access accepts Mr. Pip where he's at. Sanctuary promotes a culture of acceptance, which is the open embrace of all forms of the animal self. Mr. Pip has now been introduced to Pepper, and they have become best friends. After the wonderful time at Bless, leaving was sad. I was so sad have to, to have to leave Honey behind when I left. I have known a lot of sweet and lovable dogs, but none as charming as Honey. I think it is a result of her growing up from birth at Bless and experiencing total freedom as well as unconditional love from the Bless staff. Every day when I rode in on my motorbike, Honey would wait at the property line and run beside me. I would also go running every day in the area around Bless, and Honey and her two brothers would run with me. Here I am on my last day with Catherine, Malie, and Catherine's two sons, Ethan and Aaron. I hope to be back at Bless soon. But I was also able to spend an amazing week in Sri Lanka with Dr. Deepani Jayantha, a wildlife veterinarian and elephant conservationist. She works with many farmers in rural Sri Lanka to raise awareness and knowledge about the elephant populations that pass through their land. We stayed with a family who were kind enough to let us sleep there for a night while we went to visit farmers in the area. Dr. Jayantha works directly with farmers to income to grow elephant-resistant crops in harmony with nearby elephant populations. Sri Lanka is currently in the middle of a two-year-long drought. The farmers there are faced with harder and harder conditions to grow crops in, and elephants grow more desperate to find food. There aren't many calf elephants in the area, but they have over 4,000 wild elephants in an island the size of Ireland. With population size and traditional rangelands separated by villages and farmland, elephants and people are often in shared spaces. We traveled to many farms in the area. Here we are at another house talking about how their crops are doing and having some fresh mango juice, which is traditionally prepared warm and salty in Sri Lanka, a taste I had a very hard time getting used to. This is an example of some of the elephant damage that we saw in the village. The farmer whose lands we are on depends heavily on these coconut trees for his livelihood and loses a lot of profits when an elephant destroys them. People here have learned to coexist with the elephants that pass through the area and accept the damage as a natural part of living in the same area as elephants. Born Free helps to facilitate this attitude by financially supporting farmers whose crops are damaged as well as supporting the area's schools. This helps cultivate a positive attitude and a, a positive attitude about coexistence. As I flew home and reflected on my time in South Asia, I felt a deep gratitude for everyone who helped to guide and educate me through this experience. I learned so much about elephants and the ways in which people's lives intersect with lives of elephants and how important understanding these intersections is. I hope to continue this focus of study throughout the rest of my undergraduate education as well as graduate school. Thank you so much to Gay, Catherine, Sarah, and Dapani for taking the time and energy to work with me. Thank you.